First up, here's an audio sample. Today I want to talk a little bit about email. What are the first thoughts that come to your mind when I say the word email? It takes a long time. What do you, can you elaborate on that? What, what do you mean? Why, did, why does it take a long time? The sheer volume to work through in some cases. Uh, and there are decisions to be made with each piece of email. What do I do with this? How do I want it to... How am I going to handle it? So the process of evaluating and prioritizing each email is a little bit laborious. Is that a, is that what I'm reading? It can be. Uh, it, I, it's something that is a constant process of evaluation and seeing if the email is serving the purpose that it should. And is it taking too much time? If so, maybe I want to reevaluate whether I want it in my inbox. Okay. The Portcaster is a two-input portable podcast recorder and USB audio interface. What makes the Portcaster unique is that it takes a very different approach with design priorities that will appeal more to those with a sound engineering preference, someone who doesn't want a black box recorder which tries to hide all of the settings to make things easy and then doesn't end up working that well. But it also doesn't take the approach we see in most other podcast recorders with lots of deep menus you access via a screen. Instead, the Portcaster has switches and buttons and potentiometers, dials, on the top and front of its aluminum body. The top includes dials you use to set your gain, mono versus stereo mix, direct versus USB monitoring, and headphone volume. There are also a series of recessed switches for settings you generally set up before recording, like your high pass filter, phantom power, mono versus stereo, and output level. The Jasmine microphone preamps supply up to 65 dB of gain, so to put that in context, here's a sample recorded with the Shure SM7B, one of the most gain-hungry microphones available. I'm now speaking into the Shure SM7B, into channel number one here, and you can see I have the gain set to maximum. We are hitting that peak, and again, I think that peak comes in at about minus 12 dB, somewhere around there, maybe minus 10, and just to give you a sense for where we're at. Now, you're not running this super hot. Let's go ahead and turn the limiter on and see how that sounds with the SM7B. All right, now there's with the limiter turned on. We uh, just want to give you a sense for how this sounds and what kind of loudness you can expect out of this overall. I think that's one of the big things that people are looking at. Do I need a cloud lifter or a FET head when I use the Shure SM7B with this recorder, preamp, mixer, USB interface? In addition, there are analog limiters on the two XLR inputs. This means that when the audio level comes in a bit louder than expected, such as when you laugh into your microphone, the limiter will pull that input down so that it doesn't clip and distort. Here's a sample. All right, here's a quick demonstration of the limiter on the Portcaster. Currently, I have the limiter turned off. Let's go ahead and turn it back on, and you can hear what this sounds like. Okay, now the limiter's on. And what you're going to hear is the levels probably sound like they've dropped, because indeed they have a little bit. And what this is doing for us is it's actually catching the peaks or the, the transients, the little the spikes in the waveform, before they clip. So this will give you a pretty good sense for how that works. Now, one thing that I think a lot of people find alarming is that you have to gain up quite a bit. So I'm using a dynamic microphone here. I'm using the Shure KSM-8. And yes, you do have to drive the gain pretty hard, especially if you're going to be using the limiter and you want to really kind of even things out. So this is what that sounds like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way, and let's see if we can clip. All right, this is the limiter turned, or so the gain set all the way as high as it can go using the Shure KSM-8. And you can see we're pushing up pretty hard against that limiter. This would be too much. This is what it sounds like when you push too hard. Now let's back off some. Okay, now this is what it sounds like when you back off quite a bit, and we're engaging it not as much. And here's when we engage it even less, I would say. So probably I'd run it closer to this level, maybe even a little less. Checking one, two, three, four, five. Check it, check, check, one, two, three, four, five. So sample of the limiter. Setting gain can be a bit challenging since there are not traditional level meters on the Portcaster. What I do is use my iPad or iPhone with an app which has meters. 
or if using the Portcaster for live streaming, I'll use the meters in my ATEM Mini's control app. The Portcaster is a two-in, two-out, USB class compliant interface, meaning it doesn't require any drivers to record up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz to your Mac, PC, or mobile device. You can also record directly to the Portcaster, which has a micro SD slot, and it records to 24-bit, 48 kilohertz wave format. You can record each person's audio separately or mix both to left and right channels. This means if you're going to post-process a recording from the Portcaster, like for a podcast, the two channels are separate, so you'll have an easier time of balancing out the levels and optimizing the sound for each participant. Or, if you're streaming live, you can have the audio mixed to both left and right channels in real time so your audience hears both of you out of both speakers. There is a 3.5mm TRRS input to add remote guests using your mobile phone. Portcaster automatically provides your remote caller with a mix minus feed so they don't hear their own voice echoing back to them. Here's a sample where I called to my iPad using Zoom and it is recorded to the Portcaster. Here's a sample of what you might expect with a Zoom call. In this case, I'm calling into my iPad from a separate computer. I'm using a Shure KSM8. That's going into a Universal Audio Apollo Solo. And then the audio is coming into Zoom. I've turned original sound on, which is Zoom's funky way of saying, don't do any fancy processing on my audio. <laughs> and I can confirm that on this end, I am not experiencing any sort of echo. That is to say, I'm not hearing my voice echo back to me from the Zoom call. So that is what it sounds like. You can also feed audio into the Portcaster via its 3.5 millimeter line input jack if you wanted to add music or other pre-recorded material to your show, say for example, from your phone or iPad. And there is a switchable 3.5 millimeter output jack. You can switch to send a microphone level signal to a camera or line level signal for things like an ATEM Mini. Powering the Portcaster can be done via its internal lithium battery or its second USB-C port. I was able to get five hours and 15 minutes of power time with the phantom power turned on with the internal battery. You can also, of course, power using the second USB-C port while recording. At first, I didn't understand the benefit of using a separate USB-C port for connecting your computer or mobile and one for powering but this gives you the ability to record your phone, which wouldn't be able to deliver enough power on its own to a device like the Portcaster. So that's why there are two USB ports, one for data, one for power. The headphone amplifier seems pretty good and drives my 250 ohm headphones without a problem. This really shouldn't come as a surprise since Sentrance has a history of making headphone amplifiers and digital to analog interfaces for computers. Now there are a few cons, let's run through those really quickly. First, the price comes in a little bit high at $499 US, though it was priced at $399 US at B&H, so I was a little confused there. I bought mine as part of an Indiegogo campaign where the price was $350, so I would say somewhere between $399 and $350 US seems like a fair price. Second, the Portcaster only has a single headphone jack, so if you're working on a two-person podcast or stream, only one person gets headphones, or you have to run an external splitter. And finally, as we mentioned before, the Portcaster only has a single LED to indicate when sound is coming in, and another indicating peaking. And that peaking seems to be when you hit a level of about minus 8 to minus 10 dB full scale. But the overall Portcaster does not have a proper meter. This makes it difficult to set the input levels, and especially to balance levels when you have two participants. I find that connecting my phone and using a recording app with meters makes this much, much easier. So if you don't want to have to connect a phone or an iPad or something like that to the Portcaster, this may not be the best option for you. Overall, I'm really happy with the Portcaster for my particular use cases, live streams and podcast recording. Sentrance's focus on making great quality microphone preamplifiers, a durable build without the complications of deep menus, a good headphone amplifier and solid powering options, make this a good option for those needing a small but high quality recorder, mixer, and interface. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Music